Good morning, everybody. It is 11 in the morning, and it's the beginning of Unhindered by Coding live stream episode a bazillion um, uh, 37. Hard to imagine. Um, and thanks for the follows. Um, well, thank you, Azitsu. Wonderful to have you back. Um, and uh, glad you managed to finish your work call. Um, so I'll be here for two hours uh, working on the uh, ICE Repos project, which is a REST, REST, well, there is REST in it at the moment, so, but it's a, a web app written in Rust and using the U, Y-E-W framework to uh, archive, batch archive GitHub repos. Um, and so this is part of me learning Rust um, and actually just this morning um, ran across this. Um, so not only are Microsoft and Google and Amazon interested in Rust, apparently Volvo is interested in Rust. Um, so the um, Julius Gustafsson um, uh, at Volvo in an interview talked about why Volvo is uh, moving to use Rust as much as possible for new projects. And... <laughs> They're not looking to rewrite all of their C and C++ code immediately, but um, they are interested in um, rewriting some of it if there are security issues that arise. So yet another reason to learn Rust. Um, you can work at Volvo and write software for cars. Um, <coughs> so we'll be working on that uh, today. Let's have a look at the current state of the app. Um, so right now this is just, it's only getting three repos per page, um, but we enter a, a, an organ, GitHub organization, we get a list of all the repositories, and we can indicate which ones we want to archive, um, and, um, we, and ones that are already archived or grayed out, um, and then... This interface is going to get changed. That might be uh, a significant part of what happens today, actually. Um, uh, and all of these numbers, uh, and this is a suggestion from Izitsu, um, will replace with a prev and a next button. So you have to walk through all of them. And the next button will turn into the review and submit button <coughs> when you get to the end. Um, but this is what it looks like at the moment. And then review and submit takes us to this uh, review and submit component. Um, and we'll start today by finishing this component. Well, finishing at least the UI part of this component, the functionality of actually making the calls to GitHub to archive the repositories. I'm not going to get into that today, although we need to deal with it soon um, because that's going to involve something like Cloudflare workers and OAuth authentication. And there's a whole kettle of fun and excitement there um, that I'm not going to start today, I don't think. Um, but we get a list of the uh, archives that were checked in the previous view, and we can update them if we need to. And now what we need is a big archive. Um, this archive, the selected thingamadookies button down here. And then some kind of evidence that we're actually calling some kind of archive function. Um, at the moment, that'll just be in the console, but it'll have to turn into something more substantial down the road. <clears throat> so that's the plan is to finish this by adding the button at the bottom and confirming that we're looping through and making the right calls. And then I wanna come back to this view and change this user interface to the prev next thing that is it you suggested some weeks ago, I think, by now. Okay, so that's the battle plan. Questions, comments before we commence. Okie dokie. Then let's do this thing. Um, and actually the first thing 
I was thinking that there's perhaps a refactoring to be done. I was looking at my to-dos and this to-do right here uh, definitely seems to be relevant. So review and submit gets the state. And if we move you down here, you'll be a little more readable. Gets the sort of the global state from UDOX for the archive state map, um, creates a callback function, which will be used whenever somebody clicks um, one of these buttons, checkboxes here. So that's the callback function if it gets called when that happens and we update the state accordingly. And then we um, map, we get the repositories to review. Um, we map over them. And for each repository, we create some HTML, which is one of these repository cards, which is basically this, all of this up through the checkbox, which isn't selecting, but all of this is on a repository card. Um, we display the repository card, collect here. So map would give us a bunch of HTML elements, separate HTML elements, each one being a single repository card. Collect brings all of those together into a single HTML element. Um, and since that's in, oh, and so that would be like a single HTML bang with all of the repository cards in it. And that then becomes the HTML that is display, returned by this review and submit component. So the, the issue is that this is almost identical to the same thing here. Um, actually, if we split right, yeah, we'll do that. Um, uh, we can see that um, we have, we're iterating over something slightly different. Um, but in both cases, we're mapping over repositories and we're generating a repository card. And the repository cards are identical except for the, on the checkbox change. So in repository list, the on checkbox change is actually a callback created back in the paginator because um, we actually call back to the paginator if they click a checkbox. And that's in this view here. So checkbox, checkbox is here. This is actually calling back to the paginator, whereas in the review and submit checkboxes are calling back to this call back here, this on checkbox change. So I sort of feel like we ought to be able to um, just have a single component that does both of these things and the set of repos and the, because the only place of things that differ are the set of repos and the on checkbox change. And we ought to then be able to pass those in as arguments. Um, now the question is, the next question then is, it feels like repository list was supposed to do that anyway. I mean, the point of repository list was to display a collection of repositories. And so why do we need yet another thing? And so I'm looking at what else is different and the only other piece of logic that's different, um, so we have the props, which is where the repositories are sent in. We could use that here. The archive state map is used, um, and that is used on this get desired state here. Uh, and that's the same on both of them. So really, there's no reason that that needs to be different. Um, and then the only other thing is that this check to see if the repositories is empty 
And at the moment, if the repositories are empty, we get a loading. And that doesn't make a lot of sense if we're on the review and submit, because we could, let's actually do this again. If we had unchecked everything and gone to review and submit, we would just get an empty page because nothing had been selected for archiving. And loading would be a poor choice here. Um, so we could just say that we'll pass in a message, a string to use if the um, repository list is empty um, and uh, it's loading in the case of repository. Uh, in the case of what's now repository list. So when it's called from the paginator, it will say loading. And when it's called from review and submit, it would say you selected, you didn't select any repositories to archive or something like that. Um, and that might be um, a reasonable option. The other possibility is, oh, actually this is a better possibility. If we, instead of, so we're passing repositories in here, we could pass an option of repositories and then if that option is none, we could say loading. And if it's empty, we could say something about nothing was selected. Otherwise, we could loop through. Hmm. Not sure. And I've got a note back. Is that here? No. Uh, where are you? Um, here. Got a note somewhere. Let's see, where is that? Um, maybe that's in repository list. Nope, not in here. I've got a note somewhere that the repository list, um, is that an archive statement maybe? That would be farther down. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be here. Somewhere I've got a note saying, you know, maybe uh, where we have list of repositories, um, we might want to consider having that be uh, an option of list of repositories to distinguish between the, the loading case and the, we have a list of repositories, but it's empty. And this could be part of moving in that direction. The only reason I'm hesitating is it does seem a little weird to say if the list is empty that we assume we're in the uh, review and select and that we display something to that effect. Um, uh, but, yeah, I don't know. Not quite sure what I want to do about that. Um, but let's go ahead and see if we can use repository list in review and select. I think review and submit. I think that is the right thing to do ultimately. Um, because it just does seem really kind of weird to have this be here. Um, and I wonder actually if I split down, is it going to work better with this um, view? It might actually. Yeah, it probably does. So this 
we're going to change to um, uh, HTML bang repository list and a repository list props takes a list of repositories and an on checkbox change and so we're going to have repositories equal archive state map dot get repos to review dot so that'll be the collection of repositories that comes here and then becomes the iterator to get mapped here so that would do that part and then uh, the other component or the other part of the repository is on checkbox change and that we define right there so we can just say on checkbox change and then we can end that there and then comment all of this out and now oh we can't find repository list because it needs to be imported uh, Yeah, okay, so it told me to do the import, but it's, for some reason, the quick fix didn't do that, so. Um, so we want use crate components repository list repository list. Boom, boom. And then we don't need repository card anymore. I'll deal with that later. Um, and we're getting a fussiness um, uh, oh uh, oh this is an iterator not the actual collection of repositories oh and the oh that's hmm and the repository list was expecting a, a vec of repositories. And we have an iterator here. So maybe we want to change this to be an iterator and then change the other place that calls it to get an iterator. Because going from iterator to a vector is possible, but we'll end up constructing a vector. And since we want an iterator ultimately anyway, it, and it's trivial to go from a vector to an iterator um, I think making this an iterator probably makes more sense um, uh, so I think if this became so props instead of a vec repository if this became an iterator type equals repository is that totally not right? Apparently not. No, it doesn't. I thought that was going to be a thing, but maybe it's just iterator? No, it doesn't like that either. Um, trade objects must include the dying keyword. Okay. Oh, but is this a place where I actually want impl iterator? So I want repository, no, I didn't like that. Um, oh, <coughs> so we can't store the iterator and the props. And so we, uh, so it would have to be box, so it might as well be a vector. Oh, fine. Humph, humph, humph. So that just means that where we call this, this, we're going to have to take that iterator and collect it 
into a vector. Is that the easy way to can't infer the type vec uh, of repository and now repository is not found but that's a simple import hopefully that'll work import yep And now it, uh, the value of VEC repository cannot, oh, it's a repository of references. And repository list actually holds the repositories. Oh, you know, this is probably, yeah. So this is part of all the clone stuff because we have it actually hold a vector of repositories instead of say a vector of references to repositories would actually which would actually be a lot more um, flexible in terms of uh, memory management. But the archive is going to hold the actually hold the repositories um, but I can convert a vector of things to a vector of references to things with asref I think so can I make this this um, does that fix the collect here it does but oh but we're gonna need a lifetime um, so we could clone them all and collect them but oh who wants to do that but maybe that's what happens anyway um, Yeah, because how would we know how long this repository is going to live <clears throat> at the moment? We don't have any information here that would guide us in the lifetime of the repository. Um, I mean, we could just say that the props struct lives, has to have lived for at least as long as the repository which is probably fair um, I wonder can we do that um, that makes that part happy but now we got to say how long does the prop struct live will it oh and we can't have lifetimes on components and so we're out of luck because we'd really probably want to say that the lifetime here is the lifetime of the component but there you can't do that okay we'll go back to your suggestion of doing yeah um right i think i think that um I think that the components don't support lifetime gener generics and that bleeds through to properties and everything else. Um, and I think that there is some indication that they might add um, generics to components in the next version of U, but we're not going to wait for the next year's version of U. So we will just suffer through. So, so right, I think you will just need to clone and then collect. And then we actually have a vector of repositories. So the typing works out. Ugh, so much cloning. That is annoying. Um, I wonder actually this got complicated enough 
I wonder if this really should be a method in archive state map. Um, uh, so you think I can get rid of the turbo fish? Mm, no, I don't know why I would have been able to get rid of the turbo fish. I think because this isn't typed. Um, well, yeah, I think there's too many possible types that it might want to collect to. And so I think it needs uh, me to be explicit because it just, there are several options there um, that need to be sorted through. Now, you might, if, if I do what I was thinking and actually move this logic into um, archive state map, ah, oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't use that. I, that's not a thing that's sort of in my brain. Yeah, look at that. Um, if I move this into archive state map, I might be able to get rid of the turbo fish because in that context, um, maybe life will, it will be clear what things should be. Uh, because that method will be returning a vector repository and so it will know what it needs to collect into and yeah so maybe that's another argument for moving this logic into archive state map so that's in repository um, there we go archive state map and we've got Get repos to review. Oops, no. Um, so it'd be something like pub fun. Uh, get own repos to review. And now this isn't going to be an iterator. This is going to be a vec of repository and it's going to look something like self dot get repos to review and here I kind of think you might be right that the turbo fish can go away because it knows exactly what type it needs so the collect is good um, and we don't need that there. And then over here, we would say get owned, not pwned, repos to review. And then we get rid of all the stuff here. Yeah. Okay. And that allows us to get rid of this import which we had added and we don't need that import anymore um, okay let's have a look and see what that's doing Okay, that looks good. Now I think if it's empty, we've got a problem because we still need, yeah, it still says loading. So we need to pass in something. So we need to change repository list properties. Oh, I guess that's right here. I can do that. So the repository list properties also is going to need a um, pub empty repo list message string and we're going to have empty repo list 
message and let's actually do this so that we're a little more readable um, and then this is going to be um, empty repo list message goes there and then here here the empty repo list message is going to be um, you selected no repositories to archive. I need an equal sign there. That's better. And then repository path Adnator is going to break because we're missing that argument when we call repository list somewhere down here at the bottom. Um, empty. What do I call it? Uh, empty repo list message loading and actually that bothers me a lot less than I thought it was going to because we specify it when we create the repository list which is kind of where I want it to be we're sort of saying we're going to display a list of repositories and if it's empty this is the message to display and we're going to display a list of repositories and if it's empty this is the message that we want to display so I think the 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 string is in the right place um and the way it sits in the um html actually works for me actually i like that um and so everything compiles and so it said loading for a second that's good and then if we do this and say review and submit, it says you've selected no repos repositories to archive. Um, so I think that actually looks pretty reasonable. Um, and then if we put something here, it shows up. Nice. Okay. I think we did a thing. So then I'm going to... Uh, uh, I want to close you. Oh, there's there's your thing. Close. So I'm going to get rid of this comment. I'm going to commit. And then we'll add the uh, archive things button. And I think we'll be done with the, this part then. Uh, so what have we done? Repository list, got string added to the props, um, and that got put there. Repository paginator, oh, I just removed a comment that we have already dealt with, or isn't relevant anymore. And then we added loading here, review and submit. We got rid of card, added list. Um, we just changed the layout here. This is the part that changed the most. So we just changed this to a call to repository list. And then we added the get owned repos. Okay. Um, I'm going to stage that separately. Um, added uh, archive state map get owned repos to review. We needed a version of get own, get repos to review that returned and owned VEC repository 
to be able to reuse repository list in view and submit um, so I moved that logic here then um, so we added the string and that's really all that happens here and this is where okay uh, add let's, see, let's say use repository list in review and submit um, this adds a uh, empty repo list message to the repository list props. Um, right. Oh, it's just props. Yeah, right. Because. Um, so we can specify what to display if a repository list is empty. Um, we then refactor <coughs> repository list so that, no, review and submit. It uses repository list to display the list of repositories. Boom. Okay. Coolio. Now let's put a button in here and this thing is going to be done. Um, at least this component will be done. And notice th there is some layout stuff that needs to be done. Um, th this I'm not going to deal with right now. Uh, at the moment, this just floats here. There's no header or footer or any information about what's going on. But I think that this component, that this is all this component should show. And the header footer business is really upstream in uh, the home page component or something like that. And so I'm going to want to fix that, but that's not today, not today's problem may not even happen in a stream. I might just do that offline sometime in a bored moment. Um, okay. So we want a, sub, uh, a archive selected repositories button down here at the bottom. So this HTML isn't done yet. So we need a button. Um, what's an example of something with a nice button so I can steal because I don't like having to think. So that was a good button. That was in organization entry. Um, And that's this little div right here. Whoa, we are all craziness. Um, so I'm gonna have to whole lot of issues. Oh, only one root. Oh, yeah, right. So I need to have a div <coughs> and all of this in a div. So in you, you, every HTML bang can only have one element in it. And so if you need to have multiple elements, you have to put them in their own div. And now here, this isn't going to work because there is no on click, so we got to fix that. And this I want to be um, archive re uh, selected repositories. Um, and I probably want actually some kind of um, just P. I 
feel like maybe I want something fancier here, but um, some kind of warning that um, uh, uh, clicking the archive selected repositories button um, oh and this is I need curly braces here right and this needs to be in a string because we're alright getting how oh, I don't have any just text anywhere oh yeah here we go so I think I do need curly braces and a string um, yeah okay um, we'll uh, Send archive requests. Um, is there a multi line string in Rust that would be convenient right now? Oh, really? I can just put, um, oh, that's kind of nifty. I didn't realize that. Well, that's kind of cool. Um, to GitHub for each of the selected repositories, this cannot be undone here in ice repos and unarchive in, in the web github web interface is possible but tedious for large numbers of repositories Yeah. Boom. And then I need an on click callback. Do 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 let on click. Um callback. Uh this is going to be like a mouse event or something. Um, yeah, it's a mouse event. And I can I leave that empty for now? Right, so I, I should have said that out loud. Uh, there's going to be a ton of unnecessary white space in here, but because it's in HTML, it doesn't matter. So HTML takes any block of white space and reduces it to a single space character. So you can have arbitrary chunks of spaces, tabs, new lines, and etc and HTML will display it as a single character. Now, we are arguably padding the... I think the... I think all the white space will actually get sent to the browser, and the browser will do the simplification. So we are probably 
increasing the size of the bundle we send the, the browser by, frankly, a pretty small amount relative to all the other stuff that's being sent. But we are sending some unnecessary fluff this way. Um, I don't know if, I would guess actually a minification tool would probably take care of that that one of the minification steps would be to collapse uh, unnecessary white space into a single space character. Um, and so if there is some kind of minification that happens when U bundles up its stuff, um, well, when Trunk, I guess, actually creates the bundle, um, then maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. Um, but I think it's, you know, it's a it's a fairly small amount of text and it makes it a lot easier for me to like type and read it here so for the moment I'm gonna let it go and now the on click needs to do something it's not happy yeah so it wanted a call back here um, I don't know, I'm kind of not worrying too much right now about what actually happens on the click. I just want to think about, oh, come on, really? I always wanted like this. Oh, well, here, I know. We could change this to a to-do and it would probably be happy. Uh, no. It is not it made craziness happen. Oh, because this isn't implemented. It never even gets down. Oh, gee whiz. That's annoying. Um, so. Here, I'm just going to steal this as a something for now and we'll get rid of the body now do we compile oh weird okay that's a little strange kind of like on click with the underscore better But it didn't like that. Why do you not like that? Um, uh, mouse event. So it's a type problem. It wants Something into prop values. Uh, uh, okay. On click, does some stuff, and we just say on click here in the button. So why? Are you having a fit here? Is it because we don't do anything yet? And so it doesn't know enough to figure out how to do the typing? Oh. Um, maybe? So on click. We're going to want to cause something to happen. Oh, it so it needs that on click. Oh, so I tried to change the name and the name's getting me in, tr getting me in trouble. Oh, I would have been here all day trying to figure that out. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so right, because on click, 
is a property of the button. So we don't get to change that. So type, class, on click, these are built into the button with the, those names. And I can't just blithely change the name here because then button doesn't know what it's, know what's going on. I get it. Okay. Brrr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we should get a button and it should do nothing. Um, Ooh, yeah, we get a button. Probably don't want a button that crosses the whole universe. Um, uh, but this fixing the button size may be related to the question of how the layout, the surrounding layout looks as well, because presumably that's going to give us some edging and etc. This seems like this is needs to be bigger or a different color, probably like both actually. Um, class equals um, I need a text size. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is Tailwind CSS. Um, font size. So text X. So I could do text LG or text XL. Um, so it's not class equals text. LG, what does that look like? Gonna reload. Have we finished? There we go. Da -da -da -da. Oh, no, apparently we weren't finished. Do, do, do. Oh, come on. Now, hopefully, we're finished. I think I'm going to go for XL and I need a color font size text color um, uh, text so you do things like text white or text black presumably red I bet there's a text red somewhere in all of this yeah text red like 700 looks reasonable to me da -da 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 -da. text red 700 save now we'll wait for it to actually finish building Come on, you can do it, little computer. Okay. Um, hey, look at that. Except there's no repo, so let's get it where it looks a little more. Whoops. Review and submit. Okay. Boom. Cool. I can learn to live with that. And so now we need to actually have this do something. Um, so this feels like this really probably ought to be a service. I mean, I could put the logic here in review and submit. But thinking about it, the all the stuff that does HTTP requests really arguably ought to be in a service of some sort. 
And in fact, that should be true over in the paginator where we call the GitHub HC, the GitHub REST API to get the list of repositories in an organization. Um, and I've not dealt with that, nor have I dealt with you service. I guess I should probably say Rust. Never actually made a service. Um, and so it's a module container of services to interact with external resources. Oh, this is actually a module. This is not really where I wanted to be. I wanted to be in the docs. Um, Cause I think here that there is, where, where um, is that here? Yeah. No, this is not the docs that I was thinking of. Let's hit go here. Oh, maybe it is. No, that is different. Okay. So this is what I was thinking about. But actually, they don't have services as a special thing. They just... I've seen it in an example um, and I guess they're just using modules. There's nothing magic about them. Um, so we could have a module that handles the HTTP stuff and then these components would just call that module. And I think that's not an unreasonable way to deal with things. So if we think about, we, we wouldn't want it in components we could have a separate services directory, but I don't know that it's likely to have multiple files in it. Ah, actually, when we get to authentication and stuff, it probably will. So let's actually make a um, services directory. And in that, we will make a um, archive repos.rs. And now our lib is going to need to say mod services. And our services directory is going to need a mod.rs. Come on. Dot R. Uh, and that just is a pub mod thing okay so pub mod archive repos okay um so we can get rid of that we can get rid of that and this is now going to want to do something so we can have a pub fun archive repositories and it's going to take um, review and submit it's going to have we can take just an iterator of that um, because we're going to want to give it the archive state map yeah so I think we'll have Take an iterator. It's 
So it looks something like that. And this is going to be grumpy. So this needs to impl iterator. And then here we would call um, archive repositories. And we're going to hand it archive state map dot get repo what is it get repos to review is that really the right list Actually, is this get okay, repos to review says as long as we don't say skip, then we include it. And that's not really what we want here. Here we want any only things that are of type archive. So I think we need a new thing here. Pub fun get repos to archive self um, impl iterator item equals repository self dot map dot values dot filter map repository comma oh I guess I just use repo above comma to archive vertical bar curly brace spoon got too many things there somehow to archive equal equal archive state archive so only things that are listed as archive should get included in that iterator okay um now these look awfully similar. We could refactor those to take in this predicate somehow, but it's probably not really worth it because we're not doing that much here. I think I'm going to leave that be. Um, unless somebody wants to make an argument that we should totally redo that. Um, uh, but in the absence of said argument, I think we'll let that go. Um, and then where was I? I was in view and submit. So this needs to be dot get repos to archive. Boom. And whoa. Why did I break something over here? That didn't make sense. I didn't change that any. Oh. Did I change the ownership somehow? Borrow of move value archive state map. Okay, so we move here. No, that's not the right place. Where? If you would submit line 13. 
So yeah, we move right here. So I moved it and that mucked it up. Uh, um, so we took ownership on line 27 here and then we tried to borrow it down here and it's not happy. Ah, oh, foo. Um, so this is where Rust is helping me and it's like, eh. I didn't want to be held. Um, okay. So archive state map is coming from the... So maybe we don't need to pass this here. Maybe we just call archive repositories and access the global state there instead of passing it in. Um, or, um, oh, oh, we would just need to clone, because this is an RC, we can clone it. Oh, yes, right. So we could say, let archive state map equals archive state map dot clone and then the problem goes away oh you're so smart and I, I preferred passing this as an argument I like to avoid using the global state as much as I can um, it'll be a lot more flexible so thank you uh, clearly there are aspects of this that I still do not have the right intuition about like when I see this I don't think to clone right away, even though it's a reference and the clone is super cheap, I don't feel it. Like it doesn't come out of my fingers. Um, as soon as you say it, it's like, oh, right, duh. But I'm not, my intuition is not pointed in the right direction still. <sighs> I'm, I'm not an experienced Rust developer yet. Sigh. But okay, that does a thing. So that's good. And it all compiles. So then we would come over here and need to do something. Now I'm not, not going to get into actually sending the HTTP request. So for the moment I'm going to just say, and I think that there has been a So I think if I had just been using console bang, I could have avoided a lot of that like web, sys, blah, blah, blah stuff that I've been doing. Um, and I think there's also, there may be um, a interface for the, or a, a layer over the, the logging um, uh, system for console logging in WebSys. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I at least I got that one. Yay me. I knew it was in a scope. Um, uh, so I think the, um, oh, I'm gonna need, this is gonna need to be a loop, isn't it? So, um, for repo in repos, so that's gonna be an, a repository or a reference to a repository, probably a reference to a repository. Um, the repository um, repo, let's try that. Mm. 
No, okay, console log didn't, console didn't work. Is that an import? Aha. So I think I could import that. And then I think that, no, didn't like that. Oh, because it's got to be a JavaScript value. So I have to do the into thing. I think. Nope. Still didn't get there. Uh, so that's what I was. There is a something. Okay, let's. Um, Rust U console log. Because I've seen something debug. Console error panic. Oh, there we go. Log colon colon. Um, so if we wasm logger, then we can do log colon colon things. So that's, I think, what I needed to do. So I need to have the wasm logger in main. And my main is over here, down at the bottom. And then I can say log colon colon. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, um, possibly. I guess this is sort of more what I was thinking about. Um, just because it was in the recommended stuff, you know um in you so well, I'm gonna try it um so it was log colon colon um so let's get rid of this so log Wow, there's some logging in Udux too. Colon, colon. Well, let's try this, this for now. Does this work? No, it does not. So I'm probably going to need this one that we had. Nope. Well, that's so maybe. Oh, so it, right. So log. That wouldn't be the that would be the system log. Um, and do I have. Do I have to actually import, uh, add that crate to um, my cargo.toml? So maybe this is more of a hassle than it's worth. Blah. Um, so this is the one we've been using, this web sys console log. So maybe that's just the thing to do is go back to that. So we have, if we go to paginator, there are going to be examples here, right here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, not all of that. Archive repos. Let's just do that. Okay. So, um, we are archiving. Don't want you. Repo. Boom. 
And this now doesn't need to be there. Go away. Uh, so I probably need like um, impl iterator doesn't implement debug. So problem is it doesn't know what that is. I think right. Um, uh, does it have any idea what that is? Because like, let's see, a repository we ought to be able to get. Um, a name, which is probably the most useful thing. To, oops, no, I didn't want that. Um, so really, I just want repo.name. Then I don't need that. But I bet it won't know that that's... Yeah, so it doesn't know... This doesn't have enough information. So... Does that fix the problem? Maybe if we import repository. Aha, now it knows that that's a repository. And oh, it didn't like, it doesn't let me have a expression here. Oh, I see what you're saying. I just caught up. So this is a function, whereas the other is a macro. So maybe we should try glue console log. Okay, let's rust glue console log. So we use glue console log, and then we should just be able to say log bang. Oh, that does look nicer. And we'll still have to like into things to turn things into JS values, but, uh, and then we'd have log and info and the various bits, I bet. Um, so glue console log. Um, use glue console log and then this would just become uh, log bang and this isn't happy Am I going to have to explicitly? Oh, so it's glue colon colon console. Ah, look, that's better. Except. Oh, and now I bet I don't need the. Oh, because now I can just take things. Do I need, not need this now? And maybe not need that? Oops. Nope. Yes. Hot diggity. That worked. Good job. That's, I think, much definitely cleaner. And I should go and clean up all the logging. Um, uh, elsewhere, clean up the logging elsewhere to use glue console log. Yeah, I think that's definitely an improvement. 
Now I've got a compiler error over here. This, oh, uh, this is saying it's a reference and I made it just a repository. Um, so this actually probably is this. And, oh no, lifetimes. Um, I need, oh, but it's actually not, I think, a big deal. I think if I just say this, oh, and then tick A here. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, except, oh, weird. Now this broke. Oh, I see. Um, I'm referring to things that don't exist and actually aren't necessary anymore because I'm not using that. I was using it for a second, but I'm not now. And I think everything compiles. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Oh, wow. Now the question is if we Okay, we're all compiled uh, and let's see we want to go back here and we'll take those three and one of those and one of those and we'll go here okay so there should be one, two, three, four, five that get archived. Do oh, I want to develop? Show JavaScript console. There's a lot of stuff there, but we're going to ignore. Actually, in fact, I'm going to clear that. Um, and boom. We're archiving. Lab zero, intro to get. Lab one, Josh and Jack. Lab one. Ben G, Jake P, Lab 1, Benjamin Jonah, Lab 1, HTML, CSS 1. Yes! So I think the correct call is being, call is being made, and I'm going to let that go. Um, uh, uh, we need to change this to actually make the rest request to the github servers boom so that's a thing that's going to have to happen and i think i'm going to stop that there um and declare that a finished implementation for now of the review and submit thing so what have we done here we have finished that up some this is making so that's adding the new services this is adding um a new method that just gets us the archived ones. This is the new service, and this is part of making the services. So I'm going to um, add um, archive state map archive. Rip. No, that's not the one I wanted. I wanted uh, here. Um, get uh, repos to archive. Yeah. Uh, added a method to get an iterator over the repos. We need to finally archive. Uh, then that's all. So this takes services. So the rest of this is really just implementing 
the archiving call. I'm going to do all that together. Implement final archiving stub. Um, creates a new service. Um, module archive repos uh, and the associated infrastructure um, that service has a stub for archiving the repositories that currently just logs which repositories we need to archive and then component um, now calls that service and has some additional information and formatting Boom. spurt okay I think that's a thing um, so I'm going to push that and I'm going to actually go ahead and Merge that in. I'll delete that branch. And I'm going to come back here and delete that branch. And make a new branch, which is to do the next prev thing. We'll work on that for the next half hour, um, oops, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to pull first, so we're caught up. Then branch, um, switch to next prev pagination UI. There's a long name for you. Um, okay. So I think we're in a place where now what I want to do is um, close this is what I want to do. Oh, come on. Yeah. Bet you're done now. Hope I, I, ah, fine. We'll wait until you're really finally done. You can finish now. Am I trapped in some infinite loop? Did Trunk get hopelessly confused when I committed and changed? Maybe. Come on. Like, just die. And Trunk work this time, but don't go into the infinite loop. There we go. Yeah, now we seem to be happy. Yeah, obviously, well, I shouldn't say obviously, it would appear that um, merging and, and switching branches and stuff was just more than Trunk could handle. So I want to change this to be next and prev. I think that makes a lot more sense than having all these numbers. So 
that's in the paginator. Let's actually clear a bunch of this stuff out. Shouldn't need that. Um, so, currently, wow, so much code in this paginator thing. Um, so the state of the paginator is the list of repositories that we're currently displaying, which isn't super clear here. The current page number and the last page number. Now we probably still want those values and it's really in the HTML down here that we want to change things. Um, so basically right now I've got a huge pile of buttons and I really only want two. Um, so I don't really need that map and collect. I'm really just going to have two buttons. Um, so I think... All of this is going to get commented out. Boom. We're going to have... Uh, a, the prev will only be displayed if current page is greater than 1. So if current page greater than one, then I want a button class equals button. Um, and I'm going to figure out what on click is. Um, boom. Prev button. And actually, I wonder, I probably want the button there all the time so it doesn't just appear. I just want it to be disabled. Um, so actually, I probably want the probably want the button there constantly. And I bet there's a class for disabling buttons. Now, is that going to be a Tailwind thing or a U thing? Um, let me see, button. Um, That's probably a daisy thing, isn't it? Yeah, I think that the tailwinds is too low level for that. That's probably a daisy thing. Uh, daisy UI components. Oh, there was button right there. Uh, button. So I want button disabled. Do, 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 do. So, so I want the class to be button. Uh, so I could do something like if can I? Yeah, that if current page equals one then button and button 
disabled. Um, else button I think something like that works oops um So I want it to be there. I just want it to not be clickable when current page is one. Um, so I'm envisioning next and prev are always there. Um, on the first thing, prev is sort of grayed out, so you can't click it. Um, but then once you move forward, they're both clickable. And then when you get to the end, next turns into submit and re or review and submit. The, that's what I was thinking. Um, now, this didn't work. Current page is... in the state uh, oh I have to get it out of the repository paginator state uh, no, 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 no. so really this logic is complicated enough it ought to be its own little thing um, so I probably ought to have a little um, Um, what do I like? Uh, a little function? And the function goes in what? Um, Hmm. I'm trying to figure out where the best place to put this is. This uh, the paginator is really getting kind of crazy. I feel like there's um something a better way to organize all this, but um uh well okay let's just say archive state map. Oops, I want no project repository paginator state if I stick that there I think that makes that problem go away makes this whole thing super long um, and this just doesn't exist yet because we haven't defined it um, so let's let let prev be callback mouse event callback from move yeah I don't think we care we don't have to do anything yet and now prev will do yeah so I think that does the, th oops, nope, hey, something's unhappy. Uh, paginator line 216, I'm missing a, oh, I'm missing a semicolon. No, I'm not. What are you fussing about? I have a semicolon here. Oh, I think maybe I just hadn't saved. Yeah, okay. Woohoo. Um, make sure that we compile. Uh, 
I'm going to change. Ah, good. Next. Oh, <laughs> the other button's not right, but at least that's um, commented out or uh, grayed out. So that's good. That I think is the right plan. Um, so then we've got to get our other button needs to be pretty similar to this. And if the current page is equal to the last page, then, oh, the class never changes. That whole business is actually in the label and in the on click, but we can probably get at the information in the on click. Um, so, doo -doo 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 -doo. so here the class is always just button. So this is a lot of faffing about for nothing. And the on click is. Mm, next or review and this is going to need to be an if um, if repository paginator state dot current page equals repository paginator state dot last page then the text is going to be review and submit else the text is going to be next I think that works. I think that's ugly. We're going to want to clean that up. Uh, we need a next or review. Let next or review be a callback on mouse event. Callback from move. Okay. So it doesn't do anything yet can see if the interface at least looks reasonable and then we can worry about what a ugly mess this is um, come on you can do it little computer go 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 there we go I think it was done for a while and I just had scrolled boom Aha. Oh, yeah, right, it doesn't do anything. But we're headed in the right direction. Um, so now we need to do something with these. And so each of these little buttons So that paginator button class might have been useful. Um, and each of these little buttons, so make button callback is probably roughly what we wanted. Here we go. Um, So we want to see how the current page and the last page match up. And then we are going to want to, um, in most instances, do. And our prev is going to need to look like this, too. 
to really um, maybe actually we can just use make button callback and pass it current page plus or minus one as the page number. Hmm. That might be a thing. So, um, let's see if we find prev. So if we assert that um, repository paginator state dot current page is not equal to one. I will say greater than one. So we assert that because this shouldn't ever be called if we're on one. And then we ought to be able to just return, um, what was it called? Uh, make button callback, make button callback, repository paginator state dot current page minus one. And so that ought to we're going to need to clone that because we got the same ownership problem. So we're going to say let repository paginator state equal repository paginator state dot clone. And that's going to make that problem go away. Yeah. Okay. Um, in fact, do we need, we've got all these references to current page. Do we need the clone or could we have just said let current page be repository paginator state dot current page. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. I bet we still break. Yeah, we do. We don't have to clone it. Poop. Poop. Cloning. Poop the cloning. So, in fact, we can just say dot clone current page here, I think, because we don't care that that cloned thing gets. Wiped out. Oh, we got a cloning problem here. Um, uh, we really probably ought to just get. Is there a reason we don't get current page and last page out of here? We do it. We get the we get current page there. We should totally just get current page and last page out of this thing.
And in fact, do we want to get repositories as well and just pattern match the whole thing? Um, we use repos repositories here. So maybe we just wanted to pattern match the whole thing. Um, hmm. Let's do this for now. And then this can go away. And this can go away. And this just becomes last page. And this just becomes current page. And this just becomes current page. And this just becomes last page. Nothing else has made all of this stuff a lot more readable. Um, now, here it's grumpy because we need a clone of the state before we get the repositories out. Uh, so maybe we did want to just pattern match against the whole thing here. So we could have said let repository paginator state. No, what is it? Uh, repository, you're up here, right? Oh, it's just state. State. Um, and what's the sequence? Repositories, current page, current page, last page equals um, repository paginator state. Uh -uh. Hey, Wagafa, wonderful to see you again. Um, we'll be wrapping up in about uh, seven minutes, but I actually I should make sure I take some time to talk about sort of the weird schedule and where we're headed. Um, so that did not like that. So I need to deref this to get it to be an actual state. No, that didn't work. Um, oh, uh, clone. No, this is oh, this is not going to work. Um, So we are going to have to, so then do we deref the clone? No. Uh, so I think, hmm. Deref then clone. Um, <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. Um, okay. Oop, no, that did not work. Um, method not found. State doesn't support clone. And I don't really want to clone the whole state because that clones like all the stuff. Um, 
Now, there was a suggestion when I was here. The compiler was saying, consider borrowing here. I use the repositories way down here. So this would be, oh, maybe if we got rid of that, would that make things better? Now, can I, can I just get rid of that? It says consider borrowing, but I don't have a hard time imagining that's going to be the win. Uh, oh no, because then everything's a reference to stuff. Yeah, everything's now a reference to everything. Which is that really a problem? Um, actually, is that really a problem? minorly tedious but we would just need to say like things like this right and it's 199 I missed one So I need two stars? Wow. And then 216. I need a star here. I'm going to need a star here. Or not. Oh, it probably auto did it so it could do the math. And then 247, this one's going to have to be starred. Oh, but now we have borrowing lives problem. Oh, yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think that this was a complete nightmare, like stupid move. Um, okay. Back to here. So really, if I just did clone, um, on, uh, yeah. So I think I'm going to have to clone state. So it's 12.58. I should, I'm going to stop. I'll leave a note saying this is a mess. Uh, uh, and, um, this is a mess. I need to implement cloning on state. Um, so I can, um, or something else to clean this up. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, would Gaffa uh, make let quote make less of a mess next time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's another thing that should be on the developer mug, right? Um, okay, so that's just not gonna work. So this week's weird because I've had I've got various conflicts. Um, uh, there will be, so there's this one-off, um, uh, event, um, and then, um, I will have my regularly scheduled Wednesday night stream tonight from seven to nine, and we'll be looking at evolution computation and, um, more fun with the use of traits and trying to generalize uh, the um, uh, recombination and uh, mutation parts of that. 
Um, I feel like we're kind of getting close to the end of the rust part of that. Um, but I keep wanting to like overgeneralize and fancy things up in ways that I need to like calm down on. Um, and then there will be a stream tomorrow from one to three. So let's see, I should type some stuff tonight. Um, seven to nine PM evolutionary computation tomorrow uh, 1 to 3 p.m. and this is all central daylight time we'll do the segment we'll go back to the segmented um, file system client so sort of a systems lab in rust <coughs> um, uh, that I'm working on and then there will be no streams on Saturday um because of conflicts with other events um and then the following week is mostly okay there's one cancellation the following week um uh which is when why i think i would have looked this up earlier but um uh, come on calendar um, mm -hmm. so the week of the third Tuesday morning is still, oops, Tuesday morning should be okay, Wednesday night should be okay, um, oh yeah, Saturday, so a week from Saturday, one of the the afternoon stream will have to get canceled um, because it's the 50th anniversary of our campus radio station and I have been the faculty advisor for said station for uh, 27 or 28 years, something like that. Um, and so there are events and I need to participate. It's homecoming weekend and we're hoping to sort of bring some people back and celebrate all of um, 50 years of having the radio station. So I'm going to work on that. Um, so I'll keep things updated on Twitter. I've tried to update um, things on Twitch. Although Twitch is weird. It doesn't really support scheduling a one-off stream event very well in the schedule there. So I'm canceling the ones that are cancelable, but I'm it's hard to add a single um, and then, uh, I'll also keep things updated on the discord, um, and on, um, Twitter and the discord link, if people are interested is there. Um, and so it will be a little while before we get back to ice repos. Um, it'll be a week. Well, it'll be next Tuesday because we'll skip Wednesday. Next Tuesday morning, we'll come back to Ice Repos and uh, fix this mess that I made if I haven't sort of cleaned up a little bit of it beforehand. Um, so thank you all for being here and for the feedback and the suggestions. And uh, it is always greatly appreciated. Oh, go away. Um, uh, and I look forward to seeing some folks tonight and we can evolve bit strings because that's always fun. Um, I hope you have a good day and I will talk to you fine folks later. Ciao.